<laughs> Hi, I'm Johnny from ultimatepapermache.com and I finally got a pattern made for my fox mask. I have been wanting to do this for years and for some reason I keep putting it off and making something else. Um, it's a pattern just like these guys back here where you print it on full sheet labels or just regular paper and use a glue stick to stick it onto the cereal box cardboard. It um, Then you just cut it out tape it together so it makes all the shapes for you, cover it with one layer of paper mache. I put paper strips and just um, cooked flour and water paste is what I used. And I put it on the inside and the outside, then paint it, and it's done. <laughs> now I also have pattern pieces so that if you don't want to put the back on it, you actually just want to put it up on the wall, which is what I'm going to do with mine. <laughs> Then you use um, that other separate piece instead of instead of the pieces for this like here. Now I'm going to have a slightly longer video this time because I am going to show you exactly how the pattern goes together, how to paint it and everything in this one video. So it's going to be a little bit longer than usual. The fox pattern is going to be at ultimatepapermache.com slash fox mask. And there is a small charge for it because these things take forever <laughs> to make and put all the instructions together and stuff. So I really do have to charge something, but not much. And it makes just a really, really nice mask. I am really, really happy with this one. I think partly because a red fox is exactly the same color as my orange cat, which I thought was really cool. And it was really easy to get that color. It's just um, burnt sienna and a little bit of yellow oxide and Boy, isn't that, isn't that pretty? So let me show you how to make one. The first thing you want to do is print your pattern on full sheet labels or you can print it on regular paper and use a glue stick. That doesn't work quite as well and this is so much faster so this is the way I always do it now. And then you just pull it off and you stick it on a cereal box cardboard and as soon as you have the patterns attached to the cardboard, then you just start cutting them out. So you can go ahead and either cut them all out at one time, like I'm going to do, or you can cut out one at a time. It's totally up to you. Once you have the pieces cut out, you'll want to bend them and just kind of beat them up just, just a little bit so that the cardboard will bend a little bit easier. Then you'll also want to tape the darts on each piece first. There's only one exception, and I'll tell you about that later. Now pieces two and three are the first pieces that you're going to tape on and they fit into the corners of piece number one, just like it's shown in the video. Now you want to tape that corner first so you get it on in exactly the right place and then turn it over. That's going to make it a lot easier to bend the pieces together so that the curves will fit. Just go ahead and tape it on the back and then turn it back over again and reinforce that seam with some more tape on the front. In fact, you want to tape every seam on both the front and the back just to make the mass nice and strong. After two and three are taped on, then pull the thin areas in the front of those two pieces together and this makes the, <laughs> the center line right below the nose. Just use really thin pieces of tape there so that the tape doesn't um, kind of stretch over the empty spaces. If you do get any extra tape the kind of sticking out over in places where it doesn't belong, just go ahead and use your scissors to remove it because it can get in the way later. Then after that's taped together, pull the nose down and tape it to the upper lip. Now again, piece number four needs to be taped on the back and that helps the curves to match. It's the piece that goes between the eyes. So you want to line up one corner, then curve the piece so that the curves line up really nice and complete the taping. And again, turn it back over and reinforce that tape on the, on the front. Pieces five and six are the areas right below the eyes and you want to tape them on so that the corners line up. Um, you can see that on the video. Um, that makes the pieces fit together really well.
Pieces seven and eight are the upper eyelid and the forehead. So once you have these pieces on, your mask is almost done. You want to bend them on the dotted line to get a nice crease right there above the eyes. That's, that's kind of the eyebrow area. And then tape the darts. But here's that exception. You don't want to tape the dart with ear written on it. The ear is going to slide into that open dart. Um, I'll, I'll show you that in just a minute, but leave it open for right now. There was a, a corner. It's not easy to see, so look for it. It's right on pieces seven and eight, really close to the eyebrow area. That's the corner that needs to be lined up with the top corner of piece number four. If you line those up correctly, then all the pieces will fit together really well. Then you need to pull those pieces down so that they can fit into the area that you're seeing me a tape here. And that completes the upper eyelids. Then you want to tape pieces seven and eight together right down the center seam. And this is easiest if you put them upside down on your table and tape just a little bit of a time like you see me doing here. You want to pull the seams together as you go, just a little piece at a time. And then once you get really close to the, the end, you can turn it over and tape it on right side up. And again, you do want to reinforce that seam with more tape on the front. Pieces 9 and 10 make that nice wide ruff that goes around the fox's cheeks. These pieces are also easiest to tape on the back. That's quite often true. It just really helps to get those curves to fit together. The curves on these pieces help the ruff kind of stand out from the head so it looks really nice. Now we're going to put the ears on and I did crease it right on that dotted line. So now we're going to put it right here. Right, right where it says ear, we're going to put that there. And I'm, what I like to do is put some tape on this end and actually slip it under. And then I'm going in, I've got my fingers in the back of it. And I'm taping it, you can't see that. As you see, I, I just taped it right there. So it's taping across that edge. Now I can pull it over on this side. I can tape it again. I can tape it a lot. Now I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to tape the, the seam back together. And then one more time. So it's actually getting taped in three different directions, really. It's going to be on there really tight. Because it goes underneath and it goes on both sides. So now we've got a nice strong ear. And then we're going to bend this back so that it follows the curves and tape it right across that edge. One ear, just do the other one exactly the same way. And now he's got two ears. Pieces 13 and 14 are the cap area that lets you wear the fox as a helmet mask. But if you want to put the fox on your wall, then the pattern has two different pieces that you will use to make the back of the fox's head flat so that it fits up nice against the wall. I'm not going to show you how to do that because the instructions come with the pattern. Right now I'm just going to make the helmet mask. So we're taping the darts on pieces 13 and 14. And then once that's all done, you want to tape the center line together just like you did when you put the forehead pieces together. You want to turn it upside down on the table and then tape forward just a little bit at a time, kind of pushing them together while it's laying flat on the table. 
you start out on one end and then just kind of gradually move upward once you get about halfway done then you can then turn it over and finish that seam on the outside and so now that this is done we're going to put it on our fox the outside edge is going to round the ear of course and then this part here is actually going to continue beyond the ear down this line here not not out here where the rough is because that would pull the rough in we want it to stick out so we want the cap to be attached right here now this is easiest to tape on in the top part here if you do it upside down otherwise it just wiggles around and, and makes makes it really hard it kind of fights you so just put this part together first Then we can turn it over. You can see how those lines are lined up. Put some more tape on here to reinforce it. We're gonna tape it around the ear, which stops at this point. And then we would continue taping it along this line right here. I'm just taping it right around the ear. And then I'm going to pretend that it's going to fit. I'm just going to go ahead and continue taping it along this line where the rough comes in contact with the, um, basically the forehead. But don't tape this line here because that would, that would keep the rough from hanging loose and you want it to be nice and full. And you do it on the other side. You want to get the ear and the cap portion as close together as possible. Sometimes that fights too. If you put your fingers behind it, it really helps. So that's how it's going to look when it's all done. You've got the rough sticking out really nice. And you've got the cap, which may or may not fit. If you try it on and you think it's going to be too loose, untape this part right here if you already taped it. Kind of pull them together, which is really hard to do right there with just two hands. So you see how it now it isn't in line with that seam exactly. It's been pulled forward and that makes the cap smaller. The last pieces to go on are now going to be number 15 and 16. That's the fur that goes on the inside of the ears. So just tape them on wherever you think they look best. Now that everything is taped together, I filled in the nostrils with really lightly crumpled foil and some hot glue. If I did it again, I'd probably just go ahead and use masking tape to put those on. Ooh, that works just as good too. And you also don't have to do this step if you don't want to. I just do it because I don't want an open, you know, just, just a hole for the nostrils. I want to kind of sculpt the nostrils. So to do that, you make sure that the crumpled foil is on the inside of those nostrils, then just turn it over and press into the foil with the rounded end of a pen. And that, that creates a, a dip, <laughs> but not just an open hole. Like I said, you don't have to do it that way. And the next step is also optional. Um, I did it because I'm probably going to end up putting my mask on the wall. So I will be eventually adding some styrofoam balls to it. I just made a crumpled noodle of foil and uh, taped it onto the inside edge of the eyes. You can also change the shape of the eyes this way if you want to give your fox a different expression. I kind of softened that uh, upper corner of my fox just to give him a slightly softer look. Then after that was done, I added a little bit more foil around the inside edge of the ears. I wanted them to look nice and furry. And in order to do that, I kind of um, squished the one long edge of that foil and made the other long edge nice and round. And that way the, the foil could uh, fit in, kind of uh, flow into the rest of the ear. Now it's time for the paper mache. I happen to use torn strips of newspaper and I made a cooked flour and water paste. There is a recipe for that on my website. In fact, there's a whole bunch of recipes for different kinds of paste on my website. So just use whichever one you want. 
if you need a gluten-free paste for any reason, or if you live in a really humid environment and you're worried about mold, go ahead and use Elmer's Art Paste instead. Um, I, I happen to have a bottle that I mixed up about a year ago. I found it the other day and it is still just as, as good it, and actually exactly the same as it was a year ago when I made it. It does not attract mold at all. It wasn't in the refrigerator or anything. It's just sitting out on the shelf. Now you also don't have to use paper strips and paste. You could use a thin layer of paper mache clay if you wanted to. You can finish the mask any way you want to. I just use one layer of paper mache on both the inside and outside of the mask. I do have a video that shows you how to get the paper strips nice and smooth. And if it still doesn't come out as smooth as you want to, I have another video that shows you how to make it super smooth with a really thin layer of drywall joint compound. If you want to use paper mache clay instead, I do recommend that you still use the paper strips and paste on the inside. And that's just because Paper mache clay dries so hard and it's really, really hard to get it smooth enough to be comfortable to wear. So I still recommend using the paper strips and paste on the inside and then use a paper thin layer of the paper mache clay on the outside. The cardboard and the paper mache will create a really strong mask. I didn't use any paper mache around the points on the cheek ruff. And I didn't use any on the points of the ear fur. It would have been really hard to get paper mache around those points and I'm kind of lazy. So I figured since I'm going to be using acrylic gesso, it's going to seal the cardboard and the paper mache so I can paint it. And you won't be able to tell that those particular pieces haven't been covered with paper mache. I went ahead and covered all of it with my white acrylic gesso. It dried overnight. And then the next part is an experiment. Um, you do not need to do this. I just happened to find some acrylic modeling paste in my studio. I have no idea why I bought it. I can't remember ever using it, but I thought it would be kind of fun to play with on the Fox. Um, I spread it on first with a knife because it's really thick. It's possible that it's really thick because it's so old. I, I just don't, I'm not sure what it would look like if I bought it brand new. After I had it spread on, I brushed it with an old chip brush just to make some nice fur marks in there. And it does make really nice fur marks, but I, I don't really know if I would do it again. Um, if I had some around, maybe. I don't think that I would go out and buy some special for this. Although it was pretty cool. I, I did kind of like it. It took a long time to dry though. Several days worth uh, to dry. And once it was dry, I mixed up some white acrylic paint with a tiny amount of yellow oxide just to warm up the white. And I painted the lower part of the ruff and the muzzle and the ear fur. But I'm, I'm painting white over white, so of course you can't see it. <laughs> but, but I did I did do it on its, um, and it'll become really obvious when I start adding the red fur. Now the red is just burnt sienna mixed with a really small amount of yellow oxide. My brush was wet, so that makes it, the paint go on slightly transparent. Then, of course, I added a black nose. I lined the eyes with black, and I painted both the inside and the upper back area of the ears with black. All I did really from this point on was to clean up the edge between the white and the red. I, I used a graining brush that my daughter Jessie Rashi told us about when she painted the cow. I'm going to put a link to her video down below so you can see how an expert does it. Uh, the graining brush makes really nice fur marks. That, that's basically what it's for. So I used the white paint first, brushing it up into the red fur, and then I used the same brush with the red paint this time and brushed it down over the white. So now he's all done. The painting was really, really simple. Um, like I said, I'm not entirely sure that I would go to the trouble of putting that texture stuff on it, that medium, but it does look really nice and I'm really happy with it. It painted really fast. That was actually the easy part of, of this project. So however you do it, let us know. I hope that you come back to the ultimatepapermache.com and click on the daily sculptures page after you get your fox done because I would love to see how it comes out. Uh, you can find this guy at ultimatepapermache.com slash patterns along with all of these and a whole bunch more because I'm getting so many they won't fit behind me. <laughs> 
So I do hope you'll visit ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.